Hello everybody, hope that you're doing very well and welcome to this cryptocurrency technical analysis where we're going to be going through Bitcoin, the imminent move that we could be seeing to the upside here. We got Chinese New Year tomorrow, we got Chinese New Year. I think this is going to be absolutely pivotal for the market. We're going to be talking about the Chinese New Year. We're going to be talking about the massively bullish factors that we're seeing on the Bitcoin chart and how this could be propelling us past fifty thousand dollars i'm looking forward to it i hope you are too i suppose we're also going to be looking at ethereum 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 what's up with ethereum you're seeing green across the cryptocurrency market everything is pumping right now apart from ethereum ethereum is red ethereum is down and is this the death of ethereum is ethereum now a dead coin while everybody is moving into the smaller cap alts and even bitcoin it's pretty insane. It's pretty crazy. And I'm just hyped for this imminent pump that we're going to be seeing on these charts. So I hope that you're thoroughly looking forward to this one. I'm super excited and super happy for this move that we're going to be seeing. And uh, yeah, <laughs> Chinese New Year. What a time to be alive. Uh, what have we got then on the Bitcoin chart? Hope that you are all very well. Hope that you're all doing very well. Uh, what we got in here? We got 1,700 people watching. What I'm going to say, ladies and gentlemen, if you are hyped for seeing Bitcoin potentially trade over fifty thousand dollars, smash up the likes right now. I'm going to get the I'm going to get the liking all talked about before we begin because there's a special correlation, ladies and gentlemen. There's a special correlation between pumping up the likes on the video and Bitcoin increasing in price. So if you want to see Bitcoin pump, if you want to get that imminent move to the upside, then you can smash up the likes. Let's get this video seen by everybody. And the more people that see the video, the more people that are going to know about Chinese New Year tomorrow. And that's going to that's gonna pump the price of Bitcoin. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, go make sure you go pump up the likes. Turn that blue. Let's get that to a thousand straight away. And uh, remember, ladies and gentlemen, you can always share this. You can copy the link right here or within YouTube. You can you can copy that link and you can share it on Facebook. You can share it on Twitter. You can share it to your pen pal in china to remind them in their own country they need to remember it's the chinese new year and this is going to equal a bitcoin pump so remember you can share this around every single platform you can think of you can pump up the likes by smashing that like button blue right now and uh yeah what a what a time to be alive now ladies and gentlemen it's been absolutely wonderful um and uh <laughs> let's get into some charts then looks like everybody is super happy um everybody is super happy right now we're seeing we're seeing people times 100 on long positions i mean look at this this is this is crazy 2020 was the coronavirus drop and 2021 is the chinese pump <laughs> pump it pump it. <laughs> oh what a what a what a time to be alive is it i'm holding a oh this guy's holding ethereum is it time to sell is it time to sell ethereum that's what we'll be covering tonight is it time to sell ethereum as the coin is dying right now um you know the coin is just doing very poorly is it time to sell ethereum i'll be covering my opinion on that tonight so make sure you stay tuned for that my friend um yeah we'll, we'll be going through that obviously we're going to look at the chinese new year i think we got to google the start of this stream to remind ourselves when the, when is the chinese new year chinese new year so this ladies and gentlemen google is even getting the fireworks out ready for us the chinese new year is tomorrow and shall we remind ourselves what is the chinese new year chinese new year animal in 2021 ladies and gentlemen it's the year of it's the year of the bull okay it's the year of the bull this is very important year 2021 is the year of the ox and what is the ox it's basically the bull so we are seeing Chinese New Year is the year of the bull. So this could be very, 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 very bullish indeed. I mean, look at this. The Chinese are going to go crazy for this. They're going to start the bull market and they are going to be pumping up the prices. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to the uh, Chinese New Year tomorrow. I think it's going to be celebrated across the world. And uh, I mean, what a, what a special occasion this is. What Chinese New Year animal are you? And how the year of the metal ox is dedicated by the bull market? This is what we're reading all over the internet right now. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you can't tell, I got a, I got a sweet in my mouth. 
and is sweet, soothes the, th soothes the throat. So it hopefully means I can go on talking then longer than half an hour before I get, <laughs> before it becomes too much. It's actually really nice, this lemon, lemon, lemon scented, flavoured throat, sweet. So yeah, Bitcoin. I mean, if you can't tell, I am, I am long on Bitcoin. <laughs> I'm long on Bitcoin. Um, obviously, I got to stress. I got to stress. There's no financial advice in this video. Please remember, there's no financial advice. I'm not going to be telling you what to do with your money. You got to do your own research. Um, I can I can give my opinions on the chart. I can be talking about what I'm happy to do, but I'm not managing your money. I'm not telling you what to do in any way, shape, or form. So do your own research before you do anything on the charts. Uh, but yeah, I personally am long at the moment. Um, and we'll be talking about that long position, I suppose. This is talking about Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, how, how, how this chart is currently progressing then. So let's come down to a lower term time frame. Obviously, what we have going on right now is we've got a bit of a range, don't we? We have a, we pretty much have a, a high. We basically have the low of this range. This is over the last, really, the last two, three days. And it's been pretty, it's been actually really, really, really well respected. And um, I've got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people are going to be saying that these moves up are happening because of X, Y, and Z reason. You know, there's always some form of thing, or this is moving up because of this, or this is happening because of this, or this is happening because of this. Um, let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, what I started off with here was was kind of, I, if you couldn't tell, <laughs> if you couldn't tell, I was being very ironic. I was trying to be funny. I, I, I don't actually think the Chinese New Year is going to have any influence on the charts at, at all, okay? And I will explain, I'll give evidence as why this is not the case, of why we do have to trade the charts. And there's always a reason why something happens, you know? And let me start off by telling you why this is the case, Okay. Why did we bounce off these lows? Okay, so that's the qu first question. Well, you already know, I suppose, because you hopefully you watched my video this morning. Well, you would have known I was also in a long position there. Um, we obviously had our range or our channel low. So we had our channel low here. This is a technical reason why we bounce. But can you imagine, you know, imagine this is the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ and you come down to a technical support level and you get a bounce underway. If you're a news presenter and you go and present the news... And you start off the news saying Bitcoin has bounced off of $44,000 because there was a parallel channel support with a point of control confluence. You, you're going to lose 99% of the viewers because they're going to say, what's this guy on about? So there's always a news to back it up. And uh, what they're going to say is price reverses on Bitcoin to the upside because of Visa buying, because of Tesla buying, because of the Chinese New Year. There's always some sort of reason of why something happens. Because anybody can just put a story to anything. But what we're saying is there was a technical reason why we made this low. And and that's the reason why price moved. Not not because of anything else. We we come down to a technical point of confluence, and that's why the bounce happened. It's not because of the Chinese New Year, unfortunately. It's not because of Visa. It's not because of X, Y, and Z reasons that you might want to believe. It's simply because you came down to a point of support. And uh, like I was telling you all earlier. How can I give you evidence? How can I just prove to you that this was a technical confluence, that this was a level I was waiting for for two days, that this was totally technical and it's not driven by the charts, it's not driven by the, the news, it's not driven by anything else other than the technicals and other than the traders who are putting real hard cold cash on the line? Well, I can give you the full-on example. If we load up my account on the Bybit Brawl, as you all know, this is the chart Champions League, the Champions League Season 2. This is obviously the account that I'm trading on it. And, um, you know, the the entry of the uh, the competition is just 0 0.025 bitcoins. Obviously, we're not trading with massive position sizes because that's what the entry size is of the, of the account. But I'll show you this, then, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, what we obviously had here was, if you look at the entry of this trade, you're obviously comparing this to what's happening here. This was our high. Okay, that was our high. Look at this. The entry there that I had was was a position position that I placed two days ago. I placed this on the on the ninth. We're now on the eleventh. I placed that order while we were up at those highs. And for the competition account, I didn't want to ladder into this account. I didn't want to do anything else. I just wanted to place an order at the biggest confluence on the whole of the chart. Here you can see my order history. There's no funny games going on in here. 
Um, there is the order of 13,049. There you go. That was the order placed on the 9th. Yeah, it got filled on the 10th. So one day later at 11 a.m. I placed the order and then really simply I waited. Yeah, I, w I waited. I knew that this was the point. You know, I knew that was the point that price was going to go down to. I knew that this was the point where price was re going to reverse. So really simply, there's the evidence for you. Yeah, there's the evidence for you. That account grew 74% in a day. In one day, I've nearly doubled the account, fifth in the competition, and I basically bought the exact low of the move. And that's the evidence that I can give to you. <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, how can you, how can anybody argue with this? Because literally evidence is right here staring you in the face. There's no way that you can argue with me and say that I'm wrong in that regards, because that was the exact low of the move. That is the exact place I placed my orders one day in advance. That's the exact price that price came down to. And it was literally the exact bottom of the move before the extreme move to the upside. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just not bragging. I'm not doing this. I'm doing that. I'm just saying there is the evidence for you right there that there is nothing else that we needed on this chart apart from really simply our technical analysis. Yeah, I, I hope you, you're all in agreement with me. I don't see that you really can't be because I'm presenting with you hard, cold evidence. There's no need to be thinking about the Chinese New Year. There's no need to be thinking, oh, this moved up because of Elon Musk. There's no need to be thinking this moved up because some banks accepting Bitcoin because of this, because of that, because of this, because of that, because of this, because of that. No, price came down to our area of support. And that is really simply where the absolute low was of the move. There's no surprise that we got this bounce. I am honestly not surprised in the slightest that this was the low of the bounce because we had a technical confluence here of support and um, yeah, it was literally the, literally the low. There's the evidence for you. That's obviously the competition account. And uh, yeah, what a, what, a, what a way to start the stream, no? Um, so yeah, that, that's, why we, that's why we bought, that's why the, the low was put in there. Obviously, I hold a few different accounts that so I'm long on all my accounts and I truly believe that we, uh, you know, Charlie looks, Charlie's really good. Uh, so then when we're talking about support and support and resistances, well, I mean, I've, I've pretty clearly shown you why we bounced here and, and where the support was. So now where we, what we're going to be saying is, okay, where's the next resistance then? Okay, so where, where's the next resistance? Well, let me, let me offer this to the group. Let me offer this to the group. Um, who wants to try and have a, have a punt at, um, at where the next resistance is based off the technical analysis where are we going to be looking as the next resistance on the chart let's see if anybody has an idea look at this ethereum still dying <laughs> seen a, even seen eos pump i hold now a little bit more or a little bit more eos yeah i, I kind of like eos to be honest with you i mean everything's pumping apart from ethereum <laughs> EOS is bought the medal. <laughs> 54k. So we got some people guessing 54,000, 48,000, 48,000, 68,000. Well, a lot of people are uh, putting in that they reckon that we're going to be looking for around $58,000, 50,000, 48,000. Some guy says, move your head away from the ticker. <laughs> I'm, 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 hi I'm hiding the Bitcoin price. You know, you can also just see it up here. Yeah, you can literally just see the, the price up here. But I am I am actually in the way of that price. If you want to see it on the big screen there. <laughs> um, well, basically, we can see our first resistance. I feel, feel the first resistance is pretty, you know, pretty clear in that regards. Where's our first resistance? Well, clearly the last all time high. We look at this the last all-time high well that was that was our current resistance that we ran into isn't it so this is known as like almost a swing failure pattern we come up above the high we close back below the high and then you get your move to the downside to test a bit of resistance as support and it is obviously being bought straight back up but we can say that our, our, our first you know our first resistance was was really that forty-eight thousand three hundred level so obviously we're sat now 48,144 so we are below that this is looking like a pretty nice four hour close, but it's got another 40 minutes left. But that's obviously our first, that's obviously our first level, I would say, that we need to really get even close above. Because you can see there was no closes above the level here. See, this was all wicks and rejections. 
This is all wicks and rejections thus far. There's been no close above that level high. Okay, there was no close above it. So really simply, that is our first resistance, isn't it? I feel, I feel that's pretty obvious. Yeah. Move above, wick. Move above, wick. Move above, rejection, 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 rejection. So for us to say that we can start to, uh, you know, start to feel that there's another move to the upside, don't you agree that we need to actually close above this level of resistance? I think we can all be in agreement of that. Okay, so what we can what we can say in the most simplest way is we'd really like to see a close above this level because thus far all we've seen is the wicks into the level. Okay, so that's that's what we're looking at at the moment. But then if what we can say is if we start to actually close above this level, one would imagine after this many rejections you're going to be getting through it pretty swiftly. Uh, you know, if you get more attempts, the more times you test the level, obviously the weaker it gets. So what one would, one would be saying is if we're going to be looking at this in terms of our, our, our potential targets and to the upside. Well, we obviously came down here. Was this about to the 786 now? Yeah. So we would have a potential. A potential um, cipher. So you could be left with this. Mm, no, that would look really weird, actually. I guess you could have the shark. That would throw a lot of people off, wouldn't it? <laughs> that would throw a lot of people off. Um, not sure. This would throw a lot of people off. You'll move up and then a massive rejection and move to the downside. I'm sure that would that would that would that would probably be the biggest max pain scenario. Imagine that you break you break fifty thousand dollars and everybody gets like ultra 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 bullish, uh, just for it to go, whoop but he do smash straight back down. That would, that would probably be a pretty nice scenario, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know whether the market can uh, achieve this. Maybe it can achieve it for Chinese New Year tomorrow. <laughs> Wouldn't that be ironic? Wouldn't that be ironic? That'd be very ironic, actually, if that happened, because everybody would be like, the Chinese New Year is meant to be really bullish. Can you break $50,000? And then they get absolutely dumped on. <laughs> um, yeah, so I suppose that's one idea then that you could have, um, which would be a pretty funny idea, I think, because it would be uh, literally like the max, max, max wreckage. The max wreckage. You would get a lot of wrecked people. <laughs> um, I suppose like this is the way that you kind of want to view it. Like, at, at the moment, well, let's see, actually. I have not really been scalp trading today. Uh, I took my one trade this morning. And I have done nothing else since on the chart. So I've really not been paying attention here. No, so you don't have anything going on really. Fifteen million longs opening at the moment. Holy. Oh my, on that move down there, you had 70 mil shorts. Obviously, people closing their positions. That's pretty crazy. Well, it looks pretty decent. I think there's no, I don't think there's any, uh, there's, there's no bearish divergences. So that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's, uh, it looks, it looks okay, to be honest.
Mm, pretty funny. Uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty. It looks pretty all right to it at the moment. To be honest with you, I'm not really that worried. I'm happy to like stay in my long position right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty content to just stay under long. Uh, like I think this is the problem sometimes that you can you can try and overmanage your trades too much, and sometimes you just don't need to you don't need to do anything until the market really you know until you need to. Like I could try and overmanage my trade here, close out close out my trade, try and think, oh, I'm going to try and long, and then close out here, re-long if we break resistance, blah 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 But nah, I'm pretty content just staying in my long right now until I see a proper rejection, which we don't have. You know, I have no real no real reason to try and over-trade this. Because over-trading is a thing. Over-trading is a thing. Sometimes you just need to let your position run and, until you see a reason to close it. And I don't have a reason to close it. <laughs> you know, really simply, I'm going to say I'm not going to close it, am I? If I've, if I've got no reason to close my short, why I'm I'm sorry, long. I'm not in a short. If I have no reason to close my long, why why would I why would I close it? Not a simple answer is I'm not gonna. No, I'm not gonna, am I? So Yeah, I think I think a Bitcoin looks pretty decent. Uh I would say that it, the most probable is another move to the upside. There's nothing bearish about this at the moment. <sighs> Obviously, the thing is, you know, I'm not going to sit here and say that 100% we're going to move to the upside. Obviously, I'm positioned in a long. I feel the most probable is another push to the upside, but there's obviously no guarantee that happens. You know, there's always the possibility. You know, I've, I've told this story a few times, and I feel I've, I feel you should all pay attention for the next for the next two minutes. Pay attention to me. Okay. Because I'm actually going to go into a serious discussion here. So please pay attention. And what I'm going to tell you is about the probability. So, so you know, I've, I've repeated this, smashed this like a hog recently that, you know, the, the market's going to go up, down and sideways. We can, we can long, short or stay out of the market. We look at technical analysis to say what is the most probable, where's the price most probabilistically going to be going next is it most probable that price goes up down or sideways because price can do absolutely anything but we want to put our money on what we feel is the most probable so again that is when price comes down to the lows and everybody's really scared it's probably pretty likely that we're going to get a, a short squeeze back up that's exactly what happened okay and we're going to be saying to ourselves now where is it most probable that price is going to well, I'd say price can do absolutely anything. Price can go up, down, or sideways. We're going to say this most probable. I would say that price continues up here. You know, I have no reason to think different as it stands. I don't have, I don't have that in my no reason to close this yet. So what I want to do is give you a little bit of a talk here of why we got to think that still, even though it's most probable that price heads up, why can price still head down? Okay. So remember to listen closely here because this is very important in trading. Okay, let's take a drink and we'll start it. So, I believe price is most probably going to go up. Why can price still head down even though the most probable scenario is up? Well, this is a story about trading and why we think in probabilities. Let's say there was a trader for JP Morgan. And he was trading for JP Morgan. And he was the best trader in the whole of the business. He's a investing for multi-billion dollar companies and he is taking the best trades at the best times he's getting the best entries the best exits with the best invalidations he is a trader that's absolutely on top of his game he is longing the absolute lows of the moves he is reading the market time and time and time and time again he is calling the highs calling the lows all before it happens and people are able to see that with their own eyes you might be thinking, wow, this guy is absolutely killing the market. So that trader, he is approached by the CEO boss who says, I want you to trade for me personally. I don't want you to trade for our clients anymore. I don't want you to trade for anybody else. I want you because you are doing the best technical analysis in the world. You are doing the best trades in the world. I want you to personally work for me and I want you to manage my billions of dollars on my trades, for my personal accounts. Will you do this for me? And the analysis says, you know, boss, I have been 
you know, I have been trading really well, but do you really think that I should be managing all your money? And the guy says, yes, I absolutely do. I have full faith in you. You're, you know, the, the numbers don't lie. The statistics don't lie. I've been watching your videos on YouTube and you've been absolutely killing it. And there's, I definitely feel that you are the man for the job. I need you to trade your money. I need, I need you to trade my money because you can make me billions. The technical analysis, although he has a weight on his shoulder, he says, okay, boss, I will do this for you. I will trade your billions of dollars. And the CEO says, thank you. So the analysis thinks, wow, for, you know, first trade for the boss. I got to, I got to, you know, he's given me a $10 billion to trade here. I got to impress him with my first trade. So the analysis, he spends 48 hours studying the Pacific chart to give him a very, 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 very good trade. And he comes back 48 hours later and says, boss, I've found the trade. I've found the next trade for you. We have a 90% win rate on this trade. This trade is very, 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 very good. It's coming straight to our support level. And he tells the boss, we need to buy this support because this is the trade of the year. I've found the trade of the year. This is our golden ticket trade. And it's the best trade we are ever going to see as a company. Please, boss, this is the trade where I'm going to make you a centi billionaire, one of the richest men in the world off of this one trade. And so the CEO says, wow, thank you so much for providing me this in-depth analysis. This is an absolute piece of art and I appreciate your analysis. It truly is amazing analysis. And he says, so what, so what, what do you recommend? And he says, right, we've got to buy at this level because this is where the confluence of support is. We've got to buy here. This is the massive support and we're going to see a crazy big pump to the upside, boss. Please buy at this level. So the boss picks up his phone and he phones the broker and obviously the technical analysis is in the room and he's thinking, you know, we got to buy in massive quantity here. We got to buy because price is going to be pumping. So he picks up the phone and he says to his broker, uh, hello, uh, we would like to place an order, the biggest order we've ever made because my technical analysis has found me the best trade in the world. He is telling me that we've got a really good potential long trade here. Uh, broker says, okay, uh, well, what would you like us to execute for you? And a CEO, he says, execute a short. And uh, the, the, the technical analysis is saying, what, boss, why? Why are you shorting? This is the biggest support in the world. I've told you to long here. There's no way we're losing this trade. The, 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 the analysis is so good. We've got to be longing here. And, and, and the boss says, execute the short. And with the same, the short is executed. And that amazing support that the analysis spent 48 hours working out is obliterated and price absolutely crashes. Well, the technical analysis is obviously very confused, but the CEO says, you can spend all your time doing your analysis, but all it takes is for one person to think differently than you and your trade is totally invalidated. One person is all it takes. For me, it's here saying, Price is most probably going to be heading up, but all it takes is for one person to think differently that has the bankroll to do it to dump price down. One person is all it takes to think differently than us for this to occur. So this really emphasizes, doesn't it? In trading, we are trading probabilities. There's never a certainty because all it takes is for one person with capital to think differently than us and price will go differently. Price will invalidate our hard, you know, our hard work. So what's the emphasis? What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is we're trading probabilities and we must always use a stop loss. Why would you not have an invalidation or a stop loss? Because if all it takes is for one person to reverse the market against you, you got to use that invalidation. You got to use that stop loss and you got to, you got to obviously take profits, lock in profits and acknowledge and, you know, price can literally do anything. We're going to put our money on the most probable scenario. But at the end of the day, and anything really can happen. So that's what I wanted to emphasize there. You know, I'm in a long position. you got to remember, um, on my main accounts, actually, my, my main accounts are not long from the very bottom because I was literally averaging down the whole of the way here and then accumulating at the lows. I have a pretty nice average entry, which is down here. Um, 
and my main accounts have taken profits. I don't want it on the competition account because it's kind of like a YOLO trade. I don't really, <laughs> I, don't really I don't want to take profits on it. But my main account, I've got an average of the lows because I was happy to accumulate. Uh, have, happy to average down and then accumulate. I've hit my take profit. I know I have a stop loss and invalidation. And I'm more than happy to let this go either. It will come down and obviously it will hit my stop loss. That's part of trading if that happens. Or alternatively, we get a continuation to the upside. But I've positioned myself where I am on the money either way on the rest of this trade. If price goes up, great. I make even more money. <laughs> I'm not going to moan. If price comes down, it will take out my stop loss. And guess what? I, I will just say, fair enough. Price went down. Even though I thought it was going to go up, price went down. And who cares? You know, I'll take another trade. There's always another trade. There's always another opportunity. Uh, if price goes down here, I already know the next level that I want to buy. I, I already know where I'm going to buy if I get it wrong and price does go down. Guess what? I'll get stopped out of my trade. I won't send a, spend a second thought of it anymore. And I'll say, right, I already know where I want to buy if we get a retracement and I'm incorrect that we're moving up. You know, see how simple that is really? Pretty is. Really is, it really is simple. People try and make trading really difficult. People try and make trading really hard. Uh, my honest view is um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. It's like I was, this was the title of today's video. See how simple it is to make money trading Bitcoin. And that was not even a clickbait title or anything like that. That literally was. It could be very, 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 very simple to make money. So if you haven't watched that video, just go and watch that video because I literally talk you through like how I were coming to the conclusions. And once you have that plan, you stick to that plan. It's actually not that difficult to make money in trading. It really isn't. Okay, you don't even have to be right and you can make money. <laughs> so <laughs> you can be wrong and make money. So um, yeah, that, that's my perspective to start with on Bitcoin and why I'm long, how I'm going to approach this if I'm stopped out, you know, I'll be ready for the next trade. Why I, pr 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 I think that we're heading higher, but if, if we don't head higher, you know, it's part of the game. You can't be right every single time, can you? Or just got to trade what you feel is the most probable. So I hope you enjoyed that story. <laughs>
and obviously not just fun but also some education as well you, you learn something from these streams it's adding value or you know it's adding value adding value to your life and for me it's just really fun you know i, I enjoy coming on the stream talking through bitcoin talking through some altcoins talking about trading in general the mindset of a trader you know, I've, I really, really do enjoy it and I appreciate every single one of you. So thank you ever so much for being here tonight. It honestly means a lot. Um, let's, let's, uh, let's make some gains. So, um, yeah, Ethereum then. Ethereum, 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 Ethereum. Yeah, if ETH doesn't look too good anymore, really, that, that, that does it in, in the short term anyway. You know, we had this really, 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 really important. Um, we had this really, really, really important um, weekly level. This weekly level has been support resistance SR flipped the whole time and then it's obviously started to pull back. It really has lost the level. You know, in the grand scheme of things, on the medium term, it, look, it still looks it still looks good. You know, I, I still do have uh, I still don't feel that this is a bearish chart. This for me is still a bullish chart. But the problem is it was really, really, really hyped. Okay, so Ethereum over the last two weeks was extremely hyped. Um, and I feel it's kind of suffering the consequences where now a lot of people are like, I want to sell Ethereum and I want to move on to something else. So it's it's naturally suffering the consequences of that and also the consequences that Bitcoin's performing really, really well. So it's going to be hard for Ethereum to outperform Bitcoin when Bitcoin is performing all very well. So, you know, one has to expect... That yeah, Ethereum can pull back a little bit more here, but at the end of the day, it's not, you know, I still wouldn't really class this as a bearish chart. I would still say that this is a, a great looking chart. I mean, look at it. The the chart, this is on the one hour chart. Um, you know, it's still up and around the highs. It's it's not what I would call bearish. I wouldn't call this a bearish chart. I just feel simply feel bitcoin is is the asset to trade i've always said this though this is nothing new like for me bitcoin is the asset to trade i've always said this you don't need anything else you don't need to trade altcoins you know people are so obsessed with altcoins but my viewpoint is and if you're a champion you know that this is the thing that i say every single day in the group i always say this you do not need anything else you know people love to trade these alts because they're like people have this perspective and i don't even know why but people have the perspective of I can make more money trading the altcoins than I can Bitcoin. And this is absolutely actually incorrect. It's like 100% incorrect. You don't make more money on altcoins than you do Bitcoin. That, that's just not true. You can make the same amount of money trading both. Okay. So I don't honestly, I, I, I guess I do understand the obsession with altcoins. And, and I feel altcoins are so highly shilled because... People can make money off of shilling them, you know? People make money off of shilling them. So I understand why YouTubers talk about altcoins because there's the whole aspect of people can be paid to literally talk about the altcoin. And then I understand why people love the altcoins because literally if their, you know, favorite YouTuber is telling them this altcoin is going to make a thousand percent gains, this, this altcoin is going to change your life, this altcoin is going to make you a millionaire overnight. Well, naturally, I can see people probably are going to be thinking, eh, I should listen to this guy, unfortunately. And then you get into hold of the whole cycle of people marry the altcoin and they hold it through thick and thin because it's going to change their lives. And I, I, my opinion is, again, no financial advice. I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. I'm just giving my opinion. My honest advice, or not advice, I guess, what I would do, is I truly believe you don't need to be trading altcoins at all. I think you can bin off every single altcoin that you hold. Because I, the way that I would do is bin off everything. Bin off every single altcoin you can think of and literally just trade Bitcoin. Like it's literally the only thing that you actually need. Period. Like Bitcoin is, period, the only asset that you need to trade in crypto. You know, there's more than enough moves in the day. The volatility is really high and the moves are extremely technical. So there's like absolutely no need for everybody to be so obsessed with altcoins. It's just crazy. It's really crazy. And I do understand why they are so obsessed because they have this they have this thought process of somehow the altcoin is going to make them a millionaire or something, or this altcoin is going to times a thousand. And they'll think, oh, Bitcoin can only go 100% from here, whereas this altcoin could go 1,000% from here. Oh, I better trade the altcoins because it's more likely not than going to go up. No. The answer is obviously no. 
The answer is obviously this is not going to be the case. And the answer is obviously, in my opinion, period, all you need is Bitcoin. Like literally all you need is Bitcoin. I will trade a select few alts. I will trade EOS. I will trade Ethereum. Uh, kind of really, I don't really touch anything else. <laughs> uh, a few, I, try, I touch a few different alts, you know, maybe, maybe I'll look at a, a combined total of like five alts, period. Uh, but I really, my honest viewpoint is I would, I would happily live the rest of my life with never trading another altcoin because yeah, they're time consuming. I don't really enjoy trading them as much. Bitcoin is so easy to trade. Like Bitcoin period is easy and the altcoins are not as easy. Okay. They're, they're really not as easy. Well, I guess that's the wrong way. They may, yeah, I guess they are kind of not as easy because you have to be thinking about Bitcoin and then you have to be thinking about the, the, the alt. So yeah, Bitcoin is really easy. Um, you know, I think I've shown you this over the past few years. How many times have we correctly guessed? Well, not guessed, but predicted the lows and highs of some of these moves on Bitcoin, like literally to the dollar. You know, you've seen this time and time and time and time and time and time again. I've given you countless results, countless bits of evidence, countless money made on Bitcoin. It's not very often you see me talking about altcoins. So let's be honest, we primarily talk about Bitcoin. And the reason is because, well, I absolutely love trading Bitcoin. <laughs> I love trading Bitcoin. It is very easy to trade. And um, yeah, I don't really enjoy the alts. They're not really as fun. Um, I feel I feel retail will love the alts. Retail will love alts. But I don't feel many professional traders are, are trading altcoins. <laughs> I feel that the altcoin space is something for retail to like. Um, but I don't feel you're going to get many professional traders trading altcoins. To be, on, to be totally honest with you, I just, you know, don't feel that that's going to be the case anytime soon. So, um, yeah, talk, bringing it back to Ethereum, though. The Ethereum chart, obviously, I do trade Ethereum. Don't get me wrong. I will trade it because it's, it is an altcoin. I will trade. It's just not, I just don't put a lot of time into it because the majority of my time is on Bitcoin. But yeah, if Bitcoin continues to move up here, we can expect ETH to bleed down again, to be honest. Probably come back into, I'd probably look for it to come back into around 0 0.35. That would be a pretty nice region. Resistance, 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 potential back into support, wouldn't it? So I guess a move down to 0 0.35 would be pretty nice. It's about another 5%. Yeah, it wouldn't really be out of the realms of possibilities either. Um, so yeah, I think if, if a Bitcoin moves up again, it's pr probably pretty likely that ETH can bleed another 5%. But overall, I feel the, bit, I feel the Ethereum chart is bullish. I, I wouldn't short Ethereum, to be honest with you. I wouldn't short Ethereum, definitely. Um... It's kind of like a Bitcoin. If you want to accumulate at these levels, then I feel that that's a uh, fine strategy, to be honest. I would say it's um, potential strategy there. Um, but yeah, cl clearly the reason why Ethereum is heading down here is it's, it, well, the, richly the reason is that Bitcoin is stronger than Ethereum right now. So Ethereum is, is bleeding down a little bit. It's really struggling to get back above that weekly after you kind of swing for your pound of highs. It's just been full on down. We can imagine it coming down. I'd say between 3.5 and 3.6 here. So this is a, maybe another 3 to 6%. I would say it's acceptable for this to come down. Does that present a really good buy opportunity? Probably yes. And probably does. And it also, it kind of feels like this has been heavily sold into, but it has the potential to snap back. Like the reason I wouldn't want to short ETH is because I wouldn't be surprised if it just does one day like this and you then suddenly see it up like 5%. So I don't feel that, you know, again, it's the simple case of if this is support, you don't want to short support, do you? You want to, if you want to short, you got to short up here. Now, shorting Ethereum here is just is just really dumb. You know, even if it even if even if we could say we're we're looking for ETH to come down another five percent, shorting here is really dumb. It's a really bad trade. I would never short here. Um Yeah, that, that's my viewpoint on Ethereum. I feel I definitely wouldn't short it. It can come down another six percent and I'd be pretty content with looking for a long. Um or like adding to longs. And yeah, I, I wouldn't touch this on a short. But if we can come down to that support and get a nice bounce, then I would definitely be adding to to ETH longs. I feel feel that would be really, 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 really great. So yeah, that that's my thought process on alts in general. 
I'm not a fan of alts. We do have altcoin fans in the group. <laughs> so if you do enjoy altcoins, obviously there is a space for you. Um, there's a whole altcoin section where people will be talking about their alts. People will be giving their setups on the alts. I don't know. I've never even heard of this, but if you want like a setup on Phil USDT, I don't even know what Phil is, but then, you know, there's setups going on in here. People are obviously talking about, oh yeah, this was crazy. So you, you all know Mike. Mike is the coach at Chart Champions, or one of the coaches at Chart Champions, and uh, he's long on this thing called GRT. And that, to be fair, made him 6,000%. <laughs> so that's obviously, that is impressive. I think even he would agree with you that he focuses on Bitcoin. But yeah, Mike made 6,000% on this thing called GRT, um, which is really crazy. And also, also if, if you were paying attention... If you were paying attention, there was a video released yesterday where Mike was talking about Algo BTC. Okay, Algo BTC yesterday, uh, where he was talking through this. Okay, he was literally um, talking about it, and he was giving the um, trading setup where he was going through the entry, the exits, and the stop losses. Yeah, he was literally talking about the whole trade for you, and. Um, yeah, look at Algo today. Algo is up 10%. So there is obviously an opportunity for, for alts. If you, if you enjoy alts, it's just my, my personal perspective that I don't like them. But Mike likes them. Other people in the group like them. Mike's making 6,000% on that altcoin. He was talking about Algo yesterday on YouTube. If you haven't watched the video, go and watch it. How I am trading Algo BTC. And, and today, to be fair, Algo is up 10%. So there's money to be made on altcoins. You know, obviously. And live extreme says, if USD plays and Imi is a Imi is a beast. Imi is a beast. I'll just make people aware of this. Well, where that if you because if you're not in the champions group, you don't get some of these inside jokes. Im, Imi is obviously a beast in general. And Imi today, for everybody that doesn't know, uh, Imi won the um, lifetime membership. So Imi basically is a member of Chart Champions. He's been doing really, really, really well recently. Um, like some of his picks have just been Madre Mia, like amazing. So Imi won the free lifetime membership today, joined the All-Stars group, and this is us worshipping Imi. He's an absolute legendary trader. Really, 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 really good. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so we can talk about Ethereum USD. Before I talk about Ethereum USD, I just want to do one quick thing, and then we will take a look at ETH USD here. Okay, so we'll look at Ethereum USD. I just want to talk about one thing really briefly. And that is this. Okay, so I'm just going to try and read, make sure everyone can read this. It's, okay. There have been mm, pfft, more than I care to think of. There has been so many scammers. Scammers in the YouTube comments, scammers in Discord, scammers every single place that you look. So many scammers. So what I'm going to say, ladies and gentlemen, is please, 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 do not send money to somebody if they're asking you to send them money, okay? If they're going to say, send me send me some Bitcoin and you can have uh, 10 Bitcoin back or, or, or congratulations, you've won a competition. Uh, just go to this website and claim your Bitcoin or um, here we have some videos. If you want access to the videos, send us some Bitcoin and we'll give you access to the videos. And, you know, these sort of things, the thing is these are people who are literally our scammers. Um, you are 100% going to be losing your money. We have spoken to five people over the past 24 hours who somehow were, I don't know the right word to say that, but people fell for the scam, I suppose, where they thought they were going to have access to um, whatever they were promised. And unfortunately, they had access to it for one day and then it's taken away. And then they're saying, if they want access again, they've got to pay again. And the thing is, this is really bad situation. I do feel sorry for them. Um, and this is just... An ongoing issue, we are very, it's out of our control. The thing is, we will ban the scammer, they'll make a new account. We'll ban them, they'll make a new account. We'll ban their IP, they'll use the VPN. It's an ongoing issue. Unfortunately, it's happening to everybody. Um, so please, 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 you will lose your money if you approach any of these people saying to send you money. They are 100% going to take your money and they are going to scam you. You will not get that money back. So please... No, there is a big issue at the moment with scammers. It may even look like it's me sending you a message. It might look it's like it's customer service. It is not 
going to be me. I will never send a DM. Look at this. I mean, I have I have 244 unread DMs. I, ha I don't even have the time to go through and read my own DMs, let alone send out messages like that. So please be aware that is the case. And if you want to block that, this is what we're recommending at the moment. It's really, really, really simple. If you want to stop the scammers, these are the steps to take. This is going to take me one minute and then we'll move on to Ethereum. If you want to stop, stop, stop the scammers from the mobile app, really simply swipe left, click on those three dots, and then turn off the allow direct messages. So turn that off. That will stop all the scammers messaging you. Okay, it's as simple as that. So that's the process that you want to do. Swipe left, click the three dots, and then turn off the allow direct messages. Then the scammers will not be able to direct message you. Alternatively, from desktop, right click the server icon, click on privacy settings, and turn off allow direct messages from server members. Click on done, and there you go. You're protected. That's how you do it on the mobile app. That's how you do it on the desktop. That's what we are recommending to everybody right now to right click on the server, to click on privacy settings, to turn off the direct messaging because it is a massive, massive, massive issue right now where the scammers are going through the roof. Okay, there is an unreal amount of scammers and it's impossible for us to get a hold of. So please follow those steps. That's how you will turn off the direct messages. That's how you will avoid yourself getting scammed. And hopefully if everybody does this, they're going to eventually give up and, and, and go away because they're not going to be able to message anyone to scam them. So this is what we are recommending everybody does because of the unfortunate situation at the moment. Okay. So now Ethereum. <laughs> Just wanted to get that out of the way. This is a big issue at the moment with uh, the scam. You know, you see them on, on the bottom of the YouTube channel saying message us on whatsapp or something like this obviously this isn't us we, we're not we don't have a whatsapp group we're not going to say message us on whatsapp so yeah ethereum then um that's uh, i think for, yeah i think ethereum still looks really ethereum usd obviously still looks pretty well, it looks really good um this is really simply at all-time highs. Ethereum USD looks really, really, really good still. Just like Bitcoin looks really good. When you know, when you come up to the higher term time frames, look how bullish Bitcoin looks. Looks really bullish. And look how bullish Ethereum USD looks. It obviously looks really bullish. It's back above 1780. Struggling with 1800. But I would say this Ethereum USD still looks absolutely bullish. There's absolutely no reason that this looks bearish at the moment. Um, still holding 1780, which was a resistance into support. I feel, I think Ethereum USD looks good. Really, it really, really, really does. Uh, key support around 1740. Anything above that, I feel, is absolutely more than acceptably a bullish scenario. And obviously your next target to the upside is probably going to be this psychological $2,000 level. That's, that's most likely because the thing is you've got no resistance here on, you know, you're at all time highs. So just like on Bitcoin, there's no massive resistances. It's just like, you know, you're at all time highs. Generally not the place to take swing short positions. <laughs> so yeah, my, my, my perspective, my honest perspective on Ethereum USD here is it is bullish. I would definitely not short. Again, I'm not telling you what to do. If you want to short Ethereum, do it. I don't care. But I would not short Ethereum here. We're above key supports. We're at all-time highs. And I am not in the game of trying to short the highs like this. Okay, I, I wouldn't be interested in this short. So, um, yeah. In terms, in terms of your moves to the upside, I mean, it's probably just going to be you know, your psychological levels here. Like, and you, you are close to that $2,000. That there is another ten percent. Mm -hmm. I guess it's not really. We might not get that high. We might not get that high. Um, yeah, I guess you might. You might not get that high, really.
Yeah, so the middle of your pitchfork, look at that then. So the middle of your pitchfork absolutely perfectly acted as resistance here. So you got, you got resistance to the pitchfork. So I suppose if, if we are going to look for maybe a retrace before back up again, then you've got to want to have resistance. Let's say that this comes to test our low of the pitchfork, comes back up. Resistance potentially around 1,880 there. We imagine this getting some sort of pullback before up and this sort of the time it takes. One could imagine the next resistance on Ethereum around 1,870, 1,880. And then that would be, yeah, I think that, I think that would make sense. 1,880-ish on Ethereum. But I mean, look how well respected that pitchfork is, literally. Low, high, low. Da -da 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 -da. Touched the middle of the pitchfork absolutely perfectly this morning before getting a reject. Oh my God. And literally look how, you know, when we talk about technicals, middle of the pitchfork, absolute perfectly. And where did it come down to? It come down to that old target, 1780, and acted it as support absolutely perfectly. Let's talk about that for technical analysis then. Resistance of the pitchfork back into support of our old target, which is obviously, it was acted as resistance here to the absolute dollar, and now it is back into support. That's what you talk, call technical analysis. And that's my opinion on Ethereum. And, and probably I'd say your next target, the upside 1,880. Support there coming in around 1,740. I wouldn't be interested in shorting Ethereum here. I'm sure some people are. So uh, fair enough if you want to short it, but I have no interest in that. But I don't really short the altcoins. So... Uh, I wouldn't be interested in a short wherever it is. <laughs> How do you like that for the Ethereum then? You guys happy with my Ethereum analysis? You, you happy with uh, you happy with this? Let me know. Ethereum head and shoulders. I don't see a head and shoulders there, to be honest with you. <laughs> I don't see a head and shoulders there. Um, <laughs> I don't see a head and shoulders. Let me just check what's going on right now. Hey, people are just reading the comments here. People are liking the analysis. That's nice. Ethereum cup and handle. <laughs> Ethereum cup and handle, apparently. Hmm. Interesting. Started off the ego session with a 70 million short position. A lot of sales coming in, yeah? 11 million. A few minutes later, we're seeing 17 million. So there are a lot of people trying to short this. And this was a wow. Somebody literally opened a 17 mil short. That's pretty mad. 
Oh yeah, this was a pretty cool website that uh, we found. Well, somebody sent it to me today. Aggregate Trader. So you can basically go into here. I want to take this. 100,000. We can basically see all the big orders coming in on the exchanges. So we don't want to be on this time frame. Let's see how many people are buying and selling then. Pretty nice because it's like aggregated across different exchanges. Bybit, Debrit, Binance, BitMEX, Coinbase. See all the bigger traders buying and selling here. So someone just sold five Bitcoin. <laughs> getting to know Daniel. <laughs> Hashtag getting to know Daniel. Motorhead or the Clash. I'm going to disappoint you, my friend. I am going to disappoint you. <laughs> I am going to have to disappoint you. I I'd probably say the Clash. But that's just because they have a cooler name. I mean, I, I am not a rock fan. Um... I am. Um, I'm not really a rock fan, so I, I don't really have an. I don't really have an opinion. If I'm totally honest with you, like my the, the music that I listen to is reggaeton. <laughs> I love reggaeton, so um, yeah, I'm like Latino. <laughs> I love the Latin music. I love Ozuna, Anuel, Bad Bunny, J Balvin, Maluma. Uh, but yeah, for 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 rock, I'm not. I cannot say I'm a cannot say I am acquainted to that music if I'm totally honest with you not that I probably might listen to it if somebody like puts it on like I do like generally music but yeah if I'm at home I'm listening reggaeton all day all day every day getting some buys back happening here look at this you suddenly get loads of millions coming in this guy just bought 26 bitcoin look at this Really fun. We get to see all these massive orders coming in now. Uh, quite on quite massive. But yeah. <laughs> Hashtag getting to know Daniel. But uh, yeah, my, my, my choice of music is reggaeton. Reggaeton, reggaeton. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, man. The thing is, I need. Uh, uh, the thing is, if I put on the music, it's going to give me a copyright strike, so I, I can't put on music. But otherwise, I would like. Um, I guess I can like tell you a song to, to, and I'll put a song in the chat that I'm like listening to every day, and I think this is a really amazing song. Um, yeah, I can just put it in the comments. Unfortunately, I can't play it here. But yeah, but listen to listen to that song. This song's really, 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 really good. Oh, people are asking for this website. I'll post this website in the in the chat as well. This is the link to the website. And uh, this shows us everybody buying. This is free. People love it because it's free. <laughs> this is an absolutely free website where you can see people buying and selling across all the exchanges. Um, yeah, pe people go mad for this sort of free, free stuff. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, we're just putting in a range here, aren't we? Um, I'm thinking if there's anything else I want to cover, or might just call it a night. Um, da -da 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 -da. I can't really think of much else that I want to cover. Um, uh, why reggaeton? I think it's just because I love Spanish. Yo hablo español, así que a mí me encanta, a mí me encanta Sudamérica, ¿sabes? A mí me encanta, me encanta, me encanta Sudamérica. Todo, la gente, el sol, el, la, la clima, el clima, uh, la comida, las latinas, 
el, el mar, todo, todo, la música, claro, pero la cultura a mí me encanta. ¿Y por qué a mí me encanta tanto el español? A mí me encanta el reggaetón. Y todos los días, todo el tiempo, estoy escuchando reggaetón, cabrón. Me encanta. Um, so yeah, that's the reason. And if you, I'll say, I'll say this. So you can give to me and I'll give back to you. If you want me to cover EOS within the next two minutes, if this gets to 1,800 likes, I will stay and I'll cover EOS. Um, and if we met, if we fail the light goal within two minutes, the countdown can start right now. You have until 13 minutes past to get that to 1,800. If it hits, I'll cover EOS. If it doesn't, I will call it a night and go and do something else. <laughs> so it's up to you. If you want me to stay, give a like. If you want me to go, don't do anything and I will call it a night. You have two minutes to decide. I love the people. Saludos desde España. Hola. Las Latinas también. Las Latinas están bien duros, cabrón. <laughs> Me encantan. Chiquitas, chiquitas, pero grandotas, eh. Chiquitas, pero grandotas. A mí me encantan las latinas porque están bien duras, bien guapas. <ríe> es que yo, yo necesito ir a, yo quiero ir cuando pueda. Necesito ir a Colombia, güey. Colombia, México. Ya he estado en esos países, ¿sabes? Y a mí me encantó Colombia demasiado. Y tengo que regresar. Tengo que regresar porque me encantó demasiado demasiado así que cuando pueda por el COVID bueno iré a Colombia de nuevo segurísimo but yeah <laughs> um... <laughs> have you heard about the Mexican train killer no I must admit I haven't heard about the Mexican train <laughs> Daniel just likes Latina women <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I I do like them. I do. Um, I think we're going to fail. We have 40 seconds for another 150 likes. It's on you guys and girls watching this. Otherwise, I'm going to call it a night. I was thinking about that, by the way. I'll, I'll talk for five seconds more, but I don't think we're going to make it, so I'm probably going to call it a night. But I was thinking about doing that like a... <laughs> a live stream from like like some really random location I don't know Salve para o Brasil Daniel smash the likes guys what is Salve Salve para Salve para o this is like Portuguese no what does this mean <laughs> I don't know what you're saying Salve para o Brasil. I think this is Portuguese. I don't speak Portuguese, unfortunately. I want to speak Portuguese. I want to learn. I do. I really do want to learn it. Uh, and I'm 99% sure that this is Portuguese. What I'm going to have to do is translate what you say here, my friend. Because I want to know what you're saying. He says, Save to Brazil. <laughs> yes, save to Brazil. I guess this maybe is like colloquial for maybe like saying I don't even have to pronounce that correctly. My 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 English is rubbish, by the way. I guess this means something like come to Brazil or something like this. Is what I would I guess that. I guess you mean come to Brazil. And this is why I love Brazil, yeah? This is why I love Brazil. Um Sunday start. <laughs> A las mujeres así, tío. <laughs> this is why we love Brazil. <laughs> the caption. Brazil is nice. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. But yeah, I, I, I do. I, I've, I went, I went to Brazil. What memories, yeah. You're not going to see pictures like that again, are you? Well, I hope we do. I really do hope we do, but... Yeah, Brazil was good, man. <laughs> it was fun. Let's just put it like that. Brazil was fun. Mas Latina. <laughs> My Instagram. Latinas always find us. There's just like this running joke that wherever we go, like, 
Latinas just come and find us. They, they, they see the Bitcoins. They, they see the Bitcoins and they're like, hmm, hmm, <laughs> Bitcoin. <laughs> oh, man. Obviously, I'm just joking. I love everybody. I love everybody. Um, But yeah, there you go then. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, we didn't hit 1,800 likes. I'm going to have to say um, I'm going to be mean and I'm going to say I'm going to call it an evening. Uh, if you're interested in further analysis, I'll probably hang out in the champions section for the rest of the evening. So if you want to continue the discussion, I'll be over in here. <sighs> He's trying to ready. I am dying right now. Made my evening. This is hilarious. <laughs> yes, well done to Immy. And also shout out to the legend Doltex. There's, there's live extreme, by the way. <laughs> now I know who this guy is that keeps on donating. <laughs> so that shout out uh, so that means shout out to shout out to Brazil yes shout out to Brazil shout out to Brazil is a really good lesson um, look at this guy he's following the stream while trading that's really cool yes that is the website right there But there you go. That, that was that was pretty fun, wasn't it? So yes, this is what I'm on about. You always see a bunch of alts being supposedly shielded and endorsed by big names, and people use that as some sort of selling point. You know, this is the thing. Let's say a company. Let's say let's say I don't know X Y Z coin that no one's ever heard of, and they have the capital to pay a YouTuber with a million subscribers to promote their coin. Well, that YouTuber, if he's not got good intentions, I suppose, will happily say, OK, I'll take your money and I'll promote your altcoin. Give me a million. Give me a million dollars. I'll promote your altcoin. And the, if the creators of that altcoin know that they can pay this guy a million dollars, but if they can shield the altcoin and, you know, create them two million dollars profit. But well, that's a pretty good investment, isn't it? Give a million dollars to a YouTuber to shield the altcoin and receive back two million. You know, that's a good, that's a good business. So this is really why you've got to be careful because there is a lot of people on YouTube that will just try and accept these things and they'll show the altcoins and the, who gets wrecked? Well, the end user gets wrecked uh, time and time and time and time again. You know, the YouTuber is making money because he's shilling the altcoin, he's getting paid, the company themselves are getting paid and the people who lose. And the thing is that generally the altcoin will pump, you know, the altcoin will pump because it's getting shilled heavily naturally that altcoin will pump so you will see the coin move up 100 200 1000 percent the problem is this general person that's investing in it maybe they do see the 500 percent gains but they don't have the mentality to know when to sell and those 1000 percent gains turn into losses you know that's the general cycle yes when and when somebody shills something it likely does pump but the majority of people are not going to sell and then They'll, you know, the, the company will cash out. They'll make their million dollars profit. Then price dumps while everybody's left them bag holding, thinking, what's going on? You told me this was a really good project. I did see gains on the project. And, you know, the YouTuber then can shit it saying, look at this coin. I told you so. I told you so. I told you if you missed out buying this altcoin, I told you on YouTube you should have bought. And then they'll suddenly forget about it when it dumps and they won't talk about it anymore. So just be careful out there, guys. <laughs> and with that said, I'm going to call it a night. Thank you ever so much, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed and uh, I'll catch you in the next stream. Ever so, have a brilliant day. Thank you and have a good one. Cheers and goodbye.